welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video so in today's video is going to be um seven mistakes that cxc students usually make so if you're interested in hearing these seven common mistakes that cxc students make go ahead and like comment and subscribe and just continue watching and basically these are things that more than likely some cxc students they do wrong or they think that if they they just avoid doing certain things that they can still pass well i'm just here today to get rid of the myths or whatever thoughts they might have and think that okay if you don't do these things you can still pass so basically it's seven mistakes that cxc students make so the first one is not studying and thinking that they can pass that's the first mistake how can you not study and then think you can pass your CXC exams. That doesn't make any sense. Everybody knows on the paper one, you know, you can probably um, watch the past paper videos and stuff like that. And you can get away because it's multiple choice. But on the paper two, it's a written paper. Everybody knows so you have to know something in order to write something on the paper. So that is the first mistake that some CXC students make, not studying. They don't study, they don't have any knowledge, any information, nothing at all. If you don't study, it basically means that on that paper 2 exam, you don't have anything to write. You don't have any knowledge, you don't have any information, right? And it's not every CXC subject is going to be a subject like, for example, um, Family and Resource Management or which other subject easy. Like, basically, some subjects are kind of like common sense subjects, if you get what I'm saying. So not all the CXC exams are going to be like that and some of them is either you know it or you don't. So that is one of the biggest mistakes that CXC students make. In order to pass the paper 2 exam, and bear in mind that the paper 2 is the paper that were the most marked. That paper 2 makes a difference between a, um, a grade 1, a grade 2 or a grade 3 or you failing overall. So that is just how important that paper 2 exam is. And in order to give yourself the best chance at passing and the best chance at getting a grade one and the best chance at getting a distinction it's best that you study your syllabus right study 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 so that's a big mistake you can't pass so easily if you don't study you might can get with on certain subjects that means certain subjects you can get with because some of the subjects are my common sense but for example technical subjects right technical subject are with the sciences or maths is either you know how to do it or you don't there's no going around it if you get what i'm saying so guys do not make that mistake and go ahead and please study so the second mistake that cxc students make is by not paying attention in class so basically throughout the school year you may say oh when it, when it come up to exam time it starts um study or pay attention but guess what it helps a lot if you have a good teacher and it helps a lot if you actually pay attention when that good teacher is teaching so for me, when we look back like even upon agricultural science, which that was um, one of the subjects them that I got a distinction in. Yes, in my agri teacher, yes, it, like agri was a subject where the way all my teacher could teach. Yes, if she mentioned something in a class or she work out something on the board, listen to me up to this day you can ask me question about what should I do on the board. Because she was a good teacher and me that pay attention. So there are some subjects. When it was some subjects. There are certain, um, yeah, we can say some subjects and also the teacher really plays a part. So, yes, if you have a good teacher and you pay attention to the class, the best believe it's studying or no studying, you can still pass. You will pass. Look at me, I tell you, say. We can remember, um, I think it was like a, in my high school, we had like a 20% um, test, like the second month of the school year, basically. So, what happened is that, um, I'm not even even study for that. You get, I'm going to be honest. I don't think it's either me in a grade 10 or grade 11. Basically, I don't think I even study for that. But the point is that I get 20 out of 20 on that um, 20%, right? And my teacher comes to me and she said to me, um, y'all get a distinction in uh, agricultural science, right? And that was the first time somebody had said to me, say, y'all get a distinction when you do CSEC, right? Me in a grade 10 at the time. No, this teacher, no, it was her first time teaching me because everybody knows, say, the teacher who teaches from grade 7, 8, and 9 is not the same teacher who teaches in a grade 10 and grade 11. 
So basically, um, she said to me, who did I teach you agri before? I mean, tell her who did I teach me agri before? And she said, but you're really a retained information. So agricultural science is one subject that you see when somebody talk about it and explain it to me once, me I remember what you say. Me I remember. And she speak it over me and say, yeah, I got the distinction. I'm end up getting the distinction, right? She was a really, really good teacher. So the point of all of this is basically to pay attention during the school year. Pay attention during the school year to what your teacher say. Listen to them. Hopefully, they will teach you how. But listen to them and pay attention, and you will pass. You will pass. Paying attention really, really helps. And the third mistake that CSE students make is by not doing past papers. People, you have to do past papers, especially for the paper one. The multiple choice past papers really make the difference. You get me, I say? Even if you're not going to know everything from the paper two and you're going to mess up maybe some part of the paper two, at least you have to score as much marks on the paper one. The paper one is that paper where I'd say some people can't get away from the paper one at last. You get me, I say? You can't get away from it. So, why not give yourself the best chance? Give yourself the best chance in order to pass. Just do the past papers. You need not to print them. You need not to print them. That's the funny thing now. You don't even have to print them. You can literally even um 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 go on YouTube, type in CSEC past papers on YouTube and you see so many teachers that work them. Especially biology and then subject them maths. Basically YouTube full of so much teachers who literally have past papers from past papers like past papers like crazy. You get what I'm saying? So there's absolutely no excuse why you're not doing um, multiple choice questions and you're not practicing your paper ones, right? And even if you want print it, you can get free past papers at csecpasspapers.com, right? So the point is that if a teacher sometimes gives um, past papers to their students so that they can pass. So guys, do not make that mistake. Do your past papers for paper one. And even do the past papers for paper two because guess what? When you do the past papers for the paper two, it actually basically gives you an idea or it makes you have an idea of how the paper two is actually set up in the actual exam. So you can print the paper to time yourself and say, oh, so the question I'm going to steal, like, oh, okay, I realize those 60 hours I do the question. And I always go put that, like, for example, math, we love use math, but the layout of the math paper is one of the, the most, um, basically, you can see the layout of the paper. It basically, it's the same thing every year. Just different questions, just different numbers. Like, it's literally the same thing in a math every year. So, for example, if you do pass papers for math, you realize that, oh, so you see, love put a one type of question at the front of the paper and they're going to end with some matrix or a vector or something at the back. If you, have, if you actually look behind the past papers, you'll realize that. But do your past papers. The fourth mistake that students make is actually not having a textbook. Basically, not having a textbook is really, really bad. No, it's two things. For me, it's either you have notes or you have textbook. Now, you have some students who literally spend them enter your grade 10, grade 11, not not no, no notes. Them know them not in a textbook and them still make the effort to get the notes from the teacher when they can. So that is why um, a textbook would be useful and very important. So for me now, um, basically I've said it before in my how to pass you said physics video, but basically guys I thought I was going to fail physics and the reason was the teacher did not teach me, me did not learn, it just never did go anywhere, right? And what I said in that video was that the minute me realized, come tell us I'm in a physics class and some Japanese or something else to take place in front of me, I did not understand what was going on. What do you think me do? Maybe come to some of them say, Mommy, um, you know, so I'm not going to pass physics though because the teacher, I don't know what the teacher says she had to do. I'm not learning, it makes zero sense until I did buy the physics, um, the Collins physics concepts book. But basically, you have to realize, say, people, uh, you cannot depend 100% on a teacher to teach you. Now, if people were in the same class as me, when they really to learn from that same teacher, some did decide, all right, go start the evening class or whatever, right? But to me, at the time, the textbook, it seemed cheaper. I don't know how, but maybe just go with the text, maybe just go with the textbook, because me, I said, I can't remember the first day after school and whatever. So I just said, I'm going to buy a textbook. And that physics textbook was what saved my physics grade. Because sometimes the notes are not enough. Really and truly. Notes are not enough. The teacher is not enough. Like, me as a person where I have to sit things to myself to make it make sense. I mean, not sure if you say, oh, up to this day, I'm some bad physicist. No, 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 no. But the physics book made enough sense so that I could pass physics. 
make enough sense to me. You make me know the definition of the teacher. I mean, I learn nothing. up to Mr. Mean and teacher class, and even the definition, then I could even wrap my head around because to me, it made no sense. I mean, tell us if I never buy that textbook, I don't know what happened. God knows uh, this girl right here would have feel physics. But the point is that you need notes or you need a textbook. And even the thing about it, even when I had um, notes, I just love a textbook because what my school did was that they had a rental system at the beginning of every school year. So I did rent books. You rent books and whatever book they never have, you end up have to buy. Now for me, no, I did rent, like this, I did rent a biology book, you see? I did rent a biology book. That book did help. I mean, also by the Collins um, Concise book, right? But the point is that you need help from textbooks. Sometimes the teacher's explanation is not enough. It no, it not make no sense. And even if it makes some sense, it not make enough sense to your pass the exam. So it's a mistake that some students make, thinking that they don't need a textbook. You need a textbook. You need a textbook to put everything in a perspective. And some people, the way how them learn, they have to read it for themselves. Me other than people, they have to read it for myself to make it make sense. If that makes sense so that's another mistake that students make not having a textbook not paying attention um, during the school year not studying not doing past papers and it really leaves them in a really bad situation the next uh, mistake that students, students make is not uh, following your syllabus people if you understand say CXC put out a syllabus right and whether or not your teacher finishes that syllabus yes or no you can be tested on any and everything in that syllabus, if you get what I'm saying. So just because your teacher never gets to section C, or because your, sec your teacher didn't leave out section B, no means the CXC goes say, oh, that high school never get enough time to go through, so we're going to change the paper or accommodate them. CXC so now that. CXC so put out them syllabus, so CXC can put anything from that syllabus on that final paper. And that paper too, when you go for that paper too then, them can't take anything from that syllabus. So do not underestimate and leave it up to your teacher to finish the syllabus. I think, alright, for me, I think it was in grade 10. Remember which subject, but I'm going to tell you what happened. Maybe you would see physics. I feel like I did physics. So. But basically, the teacher herself said to her mouth, say, Guys, we're not, not going to finish the syllabus. Imagine your teacher tell us that you're not going to finish the syllabus, right? Or something like that. But I think of physics. The point is that. Imagine your teacher tell us that they're not going to finish the syllabus. At least my teacher tell me. Now, some not every teacher will outright oh, say that. But the truth is that don't depend on your teacher to finish the syllabus. People look up the syllabus online and look upon what in the syllabus. Because whether or not you know it, remember, you know, CXC is not an internal exam. It's not like in a high school where they only teach you, they only um, set the exam based on things that they teach you. CXC is not business if you're a teacher, never teach that. That is not CXC business. CXC put up the syllabus and it's up to you to actually go through that entire syllabus and be ready for that paper to exam and quote unquote be ready for the paper one as well. Right? So do not underestimate and don't feel like all oh, the just don't just leave it up to your teacher to finish that syllabus. Open your syllabus and I best believe. Best believe someone will not go shocked when you open that syllabus and realize that some things the teacher never look upon yet. When you start scrolling and see things and you say, well on there. So when we're going to learn all of this, you will be, you get a shock of your life when you open that syllabus and realize. So please, you will get it together from now. And even the syllabus, the syllabus is a lot more um, detailed than just having like section A, section B, section C or whatever. The big um, kind of topic modules them for, for the each subject. It's a lot more detailed. So it basically entails more the stuff than that you see it. Like expect you to know specifically. So people look at your syllabus. Next mistake that TC students make is actually not um, seeking assistance slash help. So some of them know them are struggling, like when me that struggling in physics. If you know you are struggling, if you see yourself or go down in another term, seek help, seek help from your teacher, your friend, your brother, some 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 tutoring service, something. Start got extra class or something. But the point is that when you see yourself or go down, catch yourself. Catch yourself. Some people, them see themselves or go down and realize they don't understand nothing and what it them leave it up. Them leave it alone and them go in and examine and feel and then say, oh, she and you blame. The point is that you find one bag of people to blame. The point is that you blame people. But guess what? Why you never say something that's struggling in a term? Even some um, students, tell your parents, and listen, I tell you straight up another term. Remember me in grade 11, Mr. Mommy? I not learn nothing. Tell your parents you're not learn nothing. Catch the bird while the bird's still in the bag. 
do not wait until the dead day before the exam and you panic you realize you know no and the whole term waste everything waste and you have to boy don't wait until you reach that moment catch the bird not the bag seek help seek extra class seek extra class buy a textbook do something if your friend ask somebody to explain it to you what you think about is that not everybody's so willing to help people nowadays and even back then when i was struggling in physics when i was struggling in physics guys may i tell you someone that's struggling in physics not a soul me could have looked around and not a soul would have helped me and not a soul could have helped me so it really leave me to nobody in my family could help me with the physics that's that's for sure so and the teacher surely didn't do nothing for me either so it meant that for me it was either the textbook or the extra class or both. Seek help before it's too late. The last mistake that CSE students make is not seeking advice from students who have done CSE before. You see people who have done it before, listen to what them tell you say. So you see at the time when people that tell me say, you know, so the um multiple times the people on repeat, I say, why oh, people for repeat? Why is CSE would I repeat it? Until mid of the exam, I say, watch out, the questions and repeat. So sometimes we, we, sometimes we'll be prideful and we say, oh, we're not actually help. And even YouTube. YouTube is there. You don't even have to actually physically go walk to somebody, walk up to somebody and say, oh, you did, oh, you did pass or whatever. YouTube did it. People literally put out their business on YouTube. They watch YouTube, TikTok, everything, everything out on the internet. Everything literally out on the internet. Like, literally, seek help while you can. Seek the help. I literally, get the advice from the people who have done it. So if them tell you, say, do pass papers, do the pass papers. Remember, you know, I right, miss it 11, 11 C set me do, 11 C set me do. I mean, I tell you, say, me I tell you, say, doing past papers for the people who can help pass, do it. If me I tell you, say, study, study because I did it, so me know. So follow my foolish advice. Basically, guys, that's the end of today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below. And bye, guys.